History and roller coasters are my two favourite hobbies. And where better to get both of those subjects in a video? Well, that's right here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Coming up across the next three videos. In part one, we will be looking at the park's origins, the family behind the park and rides of the past and lots of before and after images. In part two, we will be taking a closer look at the historic rides. And finally, in part three, the park has given us exclusive backstage access at some of the historic attractions in areas not accessible to the general public. So let's start by taking a look at how the Pleasure Beach began all the way back in 1896. Founded in 1896 by William George Bean and his business partner John Althwaite, a 42-acre site containing some stalls, a switchback railway and roundabouts was purchased on the beach at South Shore in Blackpool. And this is where the park gained its name, with it actually being built upon the sandy beach. Whilst you might not recognise this today, with the new promenades, roads and headlands, sand is still very much the foundations underneath the park today and can still be seen from certain locations. So I'm currently in the engine room for the flying machines. Now if you want to see more of this, it'll be coming up in part three. But while we're here, I just want to show you underneath the foundations for the flying machine because you can see the original beach that the Blackpool Pleasure Beach is built on, hence the name. If you just look down there under the foundations for the motor here, you can see sand all down there. I'll try to zoom in a bit for you. You can see the beach underneath and this is the original foundation that it was built on because it was built on a beach when this opened in 1904. William Bean was inspired by the American style amusement parks he had visited bringing new rides and ideas never before seen in the UK. Introducing the first major ride in 1896 called the Hotchkiss Bicycle Railroad and then proceeded with further iconic attractions such as Hiram Maxim's flying machines and the river caves, both which still stand at the park today. In 1906 he also purchased a further plot of land to the south of the property known as the Watson Estate and proceeded in 1907 with the park's first major investment known as the Scenic Railway and closely followed by the popular Velvet Coaster. His business partner John Althway died in 1911 leaving most of the business to Bean although the Althway family still had shares and an occasional input. During the First World War investment at the park subsided due to the difficulty in exporting rides from the United States. The next major investments wouldn't be till 1922, when the Virginia Reel and Noah's Ark opened at the park. Despite the lack of investment, profits during this period soared. Before he died in 1929, he invested further with the Big Dipper, opening in 1923 and he had firmly established the Pleasure Beach as one of Blackpool's greatest attractions. The park was inherited by his only daughter, Lillian Doris, who married businessman Leonard Thompson. And in 1929, his son-in-law Leonard Thompson took complete ownership of the park. In 1932, Watson Road was built alongside the park, which resulted in the closure of the Velvet Coaster and then followed an intensive period of development with new features including the modernistic casino building and rides such as the Ghost Train, Funhouse and Grand National. During World War II, the park decreased investments and remained open to offer solace to the British public. The following years of Leonard's ownership saw big investments continue from the 1950s onwards with the opening of major rides such as the Wild Mouse, Derby Racer and Alice in Wonderland. It was also around this time that Leonard had struck up a friendship with Walt Disney, who visited the park looking for inspiration for his new venture in California known as Disneyland Park. Leonard died in 1976, having run the Pleasure Beach for 47 years. 
It was passed back to his wife, Doris Thompson, and their son, Geoffrey Thompson, who took over as managing director. Geoffrey ran the park until his death in 2004, with major installations such as the Steeplechase, Revolution, Avalanche, Valhalla, and the Pepsi Max Big One that opened in 1994. Doris Thompson also passed away just nine days after her son Geoffrey's funeral. The current director of the park is Geoffrey's eldest daughter, Amanda Thompson, and his other two children, Nick and Fiona Thompson, still remain in control of the Pleasure Beach, meaning it has been in the same family since it opened in 1896. The park continues to be one of the leading historic tourist attractions in the world, and bringing millions of happy visitors to Blackpool for over 125 years. The Pleasure Beach owners had a really strong working relationship with the renowned architect Joseph Emberton, and a lot of his work can still be seen around the Pleasure Beach today. In 1931, whilst on a visit to Philadelphia, the Pleasure Beach's new managing director, Leonard Thompson, saw parks themed in the modernist style and thought that the style might suit the Pleasure Beach. And in 1933, Leonard brought in the renowned architect, Joseph Emberton, to give the Pleasure Beach a unified image. By the end of the decade, there was not a corner of the park that had not been transformed in the Emberton style. He started with the replacement of the casino building in 1939, most of which still stands today in its original state. A few minor alterations took place in the preceding years. The interior has had many purposes. A glass elevator was fitted on the outside of the building, and the park's old monorail system was rerouted to glide around the outside of the building. Most of these have since been removed, and the building has been upgraded and restored back to most of its original features. He also worked on many other rides, such as the iconic Grand National Station, Noah's Ark, the Ghost Train, the Big Dipper, and the Ice Arena, a 2000 seat ice rink and show venue. And not forgetting the world famous Blackpool Pleasure Beach Funhouse, Now let's take a look at some of the more unique rides of the past at the Pleasure Beach. Not much is known about this ride. It appears to have a conveyor lift system to take you to the top and then you slide down a steep slide on a mat back to the bottom. It was located next to the Fun House and it ran from the 1920s until it closed to make way for a bingo stand and derby racer in the late 1950s. The Fun House opened in 1934 with an Art Deco style by architect Joseph Emberton. It contained slides, moving walkways and lots of mechanical attractions. The facade for the building was updated sometime in the 1960s, and the park's monorail system ran through the building in its later years. Sadly the Fun House burned down in 1991. It was a huge loss for the park as it proved very popular with children and adults alike. The site is now home to the award-winning £15 million Valhalla water ride. Although the ride still exists at the park today, it ceased as an attraction in 2008. It's now a showpiece above the new ticket and entrance area to the park. The rocking mechanism for the boat still works today and runs daily above the entrance. It opened in 1922 as a funhouse style animal themed attraction. You would walk around the building underneath that was filled with attractions and then enter the Ark itself. The Ark was constantly rocking back and forth, giving a strange sensation when walking around inside the building. It used to also have moving figures on the outside of the building. 
using a conveyor system around the upper part of the ride. The cableway had numerous names throughout its life at the Pleasure Beach. It ran from near the Space Invader building in the south of the park and down to a raised station next to the Funhouse or Valhalla ride today. Both stations still exist today, although they now have other uses. It opened in 1960 and closed in the year 2000. Here we have some rare footage from the construction and opening of the cableway in 1960. The Velvet Coaster opened in 1909 as a side friction roller coaster. It was accessed from the station building on Watson Road. It was finally removed in 1932 to make way for the roller coaster. Parts of the lift hill and ride components were reused on this new ride, which still operates today as Nickelodeon Streak. This is one of those rides that people would love to see return to the park. It was unique and very thrilling. You sat in large spinning tubs on a roller coaster type assembly that rolled down the steep gradients in a zigzag fashion, with some fast and sharp dips at the end. It opened in 1922 and closed in 1982 when it reached the end of its life. This was the first water chute ride to appear at the park, with a second similar ride with the same name appearing much later. You ascended a lift hill in a boat and then coasted down a wooden drop into a large pond below. You relied on the boat to skim the top of the water before being guided back to the station by a boatman with a large punt stick. The later version of this, although very similar, had a continuous track under the water, which meant it was never free floating in the water, more of a modern splash flume ride. The most upsetting removal of all, for the general public and the park owners themselves, was the iconic Wild Mouse. It opened in 1958 as a two-level version, built entirely in-house by the park themselves. You can see from this rare footage of the construction of the ride. It was modified in the 1960s to have a higher third level added above, making the ride about one third longer. The ride was modified and refurbished in 2007 and a new magnetic braking system was added in 2017. It closed that same year after technical issues and would never reopen for the 2018 season. It had simply reached the end of its operating life and was a maintenance burden due to the modern health and safety regulations. Now let's have a look around the park at some of the famous scenes and look at how they've changed over time. My grandfather thought some of the rides and attractions that he saw in Coney Island would do well in England. He came with the ride to Blackpool. He tried it out on the sand hills of Blackpool. It was a great success and from that one ride, Blackpool Pleasure Beach was born. People said, oh, must have been a shilling for a roller coaster. Yes, yes, he said, it's, uh, it's expensive, I know. But then, you see, for that, I shall give them a mahogany pay desk and a terraza entrance floor. Point is, you should sit down, relax, let the car take you, go with the ride, don't hold back, let yourself go, and it's very enjoyable, very exhilarating. Oh, I can do that any time. Coming time for a journey to the Pleasure Beach is really about fun, about happiness, making old people young again and giving them just the best day out of their lives. Of the whole resort. The skyline changed. The whole resort. It's where 
building the biggest, most exciting roller coaster of all time. We're famous, of course, at Blackwell Place Beach for our great roller coaster. Well, we have some pretty exciting designers who are dreaming up wild ideas for the future. When you come here, there's so much fun here. All the magic that you'll ever feel when making this place just for you. Feel young, that's just what we do. Make this day you forever knew you'd have the time of your life. <laughs> the rides, the show. Join us in the next video where we will be delving into the historic rides still operating today.